so first some people have commented i've seen some comments on the news releases um and how they're constructed and how these things get out the door uh, so let me explain a little bit i want to explain how these occur and why they are the way they are especially on the COVID side okay because that's where most of the questions come from so when we sent we have to send a news release out about different deals we have made on the COVID side of things. We are compelled to send these news releases out, not that we don't want to or anything, but they're, you know, it's a rule. So what happens is we sign deals. We have to disclose the deals to, you know, the exchange and to the regulatory bodies. So that's step one. So once those contracts are in play, they get filed. You know, et cetera. We've got so much time to announce it if it's deemed material. Yeah, yeah. Now, the question, the vast majority of the questions have been coming in around why we don't include a number value in the deals. Because in, a, in most of the cases, the number value is indecisive. So we have to seek guidance from the TSX around what we're allowed to put in there. Um, as a lot of the deals, the way they work is, you know, they could potentially, you know, in, a, in some world be worth zero dollars the moment you sign it. If all of a sudden, you know, COVID testing stopped tomorrow. So that's the one extreme. We all know that's not going to happen, but that's the discussion around what happens is that's what it starts with. And then the second one is, well, how many people are you going to test? And well, we can't give an exact number on that ever because we don't know. So let's say we're testing, I don't know, a mining company. And they have approximately 150 people per week, but some weeks they have 60 and some weeks they have 250. And some weeks they have none. And then other weeks, um, you know, they decided to close the mine for three weeks. So they're not going to do anything. This happens all the time. We get the same situation on productions, um, like TV and film productions. So there's no really good way to calculate a number, all right? So when, <clears throat> when one of these contracts is entered into, we have to give our best guess, so to speak, um, and whether or not we're allowed to release that, that's usually not up to us. Usually, when it's been one of the larger contracts, they've had to tell us, you know, we've been asked to say the value is up to a certain amount. Um, we had to do that in one of our larger contracts earlier. These past 12 months, when we first got started, which we reported on recently, you know, our initial value was... We thought it would be worth up to around twenty million. Um, can, total ends up it was around twenty five ish, twenty six ish. So we were off by you know a substantial factor, um, and that's not due to data metrics cal calculations. That's due to say like in this case, this is a movie studio. So the movie studio gave us a number, and then that number ended up being dramatically off. <laughs> um. And so this is a lot of, th that particular scenario illustrates why a lot of times we're compelled to keep a number out of there or we're just, we're only allowed to say it may be worth up to X amount of dollars. Um, because some of these situations are fluid and they have changed. Um, and... <clears throat> And so that's that's the grant, like the the thousand kilometer view of why those are uh, placed the way they are. Uh, one other thing that we you know that we'll do, we'll make sure that the quality of those things are as good as possible. So we've received some comments on that. I'll personally look into that, even though I've said something about it in the past. I'll do it again. Um, so anyway. I hope that's clear and why that those policies are in play. Uh, it's not much 
we can on the dm side of things can do about it around what we're allowed to say in those news releases um and i think you know what the tsx is trying to do around this is keep keep these from being overly promotional which i understand i personally think they've gone too far but that's just an opinion i'm not the regulator it's my opinion doesn't matter in this case um but we will continue to share every single thing that we can um as far as those are concerned so a quick something that came up ahead of time so if these are basically the question is if we if this stuff is a bit vague and murky how do we manage inventory and how do we manage the supply side okay inventory for most covid stuff is is good the shelf life on the stuff is a year or more for these things so i don't think we have any product that has a shelf life under one year so you can plan out a little extra in your inventory for the next three to six months or whatever it's going to be um in case you do get hit with a spike you're able to weather it and then you can just order some more uh <clears throat> so that that's how it's done you know we store it um on the canada side of things once it's you know once everything's delivered either through vancouver or toronto so that's how the supply side is uh is handled so we always have extra in addition we always have extra because these things are always popping up um a lot of times these are surprises like we'll get a call well not a lot of times but sometimes but this just happened two weeks ago like we got a call in toronto that said you know we've got a production that's going to come through for i don't remember the exact number of days but it was no more than a week right they were just popping in to do some filming in the greater toronto area um and they forgot to get you know covid testing lined up so they'll call us and they'll say okay well we need one production crew for one week that's very 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 small but it's just to illustrate that we do have some unexpected stuff that comes up so we do keep a bit of extra inventory on hand just so we can handle that and be able to service any kind of crazy requests that pop up you know we get requests for some pretty remote places sometimes even had somebody ask us if we could do something out by Gander in Newfoundland, if anybody's familiar with that territory. So pretty far out there. <clears throat> okay. So I hope that goes to address a lot of what's, you know, how the news releases are over there are put together. Um, again, if you've got to see numbers, we can't hold numbers past the quarterly financials. That's just not going to change. So when the, the the real numbers do come in and they're properly vetted, they go into those material documents. If we get good indicators on numbers, those will come out in press releases. Um, as long as the exchange and the you know the IROC says everything's fine, um, we will push those out, and that's there's no issues with that. Okay. Uh. So, all right, a few more general things. Um, I've spoken about this one before. I'm getting asked again but from a couple of people about a share buyback program. This has been discussed, and I can't discuss it in a material fashion in this forum, okay, unfortunately. So I would love to be able to speak on how likely these things are or – you know, what the time frames are or things of that nature. But again, I can't discuss that type of material information in this forum. Um, it will be, you know, through the press releases, et cetera, where everybody gets this type of news at exactly the same time. I can say that the board has considered this for a while now, and it's one of the things that, you know, we, we have been looking at. But again, I won't put anything material around it as I'm not allowed to legally. I wish I could. Uh -uh. Okay. So let me continue to address some of these on this COVID thing so I can get it done. Um, so w the people asking around the, the news releases, one thing, why was there a COVID check um, picture at the bottom? I think that was a mistake. Um, 
personally. I don't think that was supposed to be there. So I've already asked about that. Say, look, if somebody made a mistake, don't do it again, please. Um, that being said, there is some rapid testing going on with the antigen tests uh, in the various verticals we're in right now. So they are experimenting with those. Um, so what types of tests are being performed for those agreements we just announced? It's the standard COVID tests that we're talking about in most agreements. Um, so PCR style testing. Again, some of these verticals are experimenting with the antigen tests, uh, but there's nothing in the contractual agreements yet with the antigen tests as far as unions and stuff are concerned. Um, but there are groups out there using them um, for different for different purposes. So once those contracts do change and are finalized, then we'll report that out to you guys and there'll be more to say about antigen tests and stuff. Um, and then, so the guys are, another one about these news releases, are they all with, um, are they different deals in different companies? Yes. Um, we deal with quite a few companies uh, right now and every single time we have to strike new deals, um, the way it works in the, the TV and film industry, so everybody knows in, in the general case, is there's there's overarching studios, like really big ones, like you'll see on your TV. Those are the parent companies, like, say, I don't know, Warner Brothers or um, Netflix or, you know, Apple or Walt Disney. Those Those are like big parent companies. And then there's intermediary studios that you may see on the timelines or on the credits like Lionsgate and some other ones. And then for just about every production, there's a smaller company that's formed just for that production. And you end up, what happens is you end up signing with those smaller companies or intermediaries. So every single deal is inked as a new deal, just about sometimes underneath an overarching guidance document, but sometimes not. So, yeah. All that to say that most of those are almost all entirely different deals. If they're not there, we'll point it out that this is a continuation or a follow on to um, another deal. Okay. So, next questions that are coming in, I want to just make sure I've got all this news release and COVID stuff covered because we had a quite a bit going in through there. Give me just a sec, make sure I got everything. Tests are being performed. Da -da. Okay, so now I want to move on to the, the second biggest chunk of stuff I'm seeing, um, which was about is about Medi-Call. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. First question, when is Medi-Call going to be released? Again, that'll be in the main news releases. Uh, I can't give you a date here. What I can say is I personally have just reviewed the latest iterations of the of the application um, over the past few days, and I like it. I think it looks good, and I'm really proud of what the team did and the, the time frame they had. There will be um, there will be more information on the app coming out like very shortly. Um, so count in weeks here. And when you guys start seeing that, you'll see exactly what this thing's doing and how it works, how it's arranged, um, et cetera. So um, that'll be out. Like I said, count that in weeks, not not months. This is it's really it's really looking good. Uh, and that's when we're going to go through how all the um, the numbers work. You know, how, what's the, the business plan, the revenue plan, um, et cetera, et cetera, and how that it's all going to be tied into data metrics, medical, concierge medical, and the, the bit that we've built up on, um, on the medical side of things. So we will have that out. There's going to be documentation coming, um, put into the public sphere around this. So everybody will get it at the same time. And everybody will be able to, you know, review and comment on that. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of comments um, in this particular forum. Uh, 
So it'll be there. Unfortunately, I can't go into those numbers again. I, I appreciate that everybody wants exact nitty gritty numbers and everything as soon as possible. But again, please appreciate that I have limitations in this particular form um, that are placed upon me by the, the regulating bodies in order to provide, you know, a fair playing field to all investors. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, so I've got another follow-on question. People are asking about reverse splits and buybacks and stuff. Um, so I'm not going to go explain all the different... Um, all the different shares and how all this stuff type, how all this works. Um, so, I mean, there's different ways we can do things, you know, you talk about reverse splits, buybacks, et cetera. Effectively, what that means, they all effectively mean and everything is that we reduce the number of shares on the market. So if you want to know how, um, how all this works go to investopedia take a look um and there's there's articles on investopedia that'll explain uh dilution buyback you know all those things in a much more um detailed manner than uh than i can explain in a few minutes here now just so everybody knows um you know we have talked about reverse uh, splits and stuff in the past right uh, most of the time this has come up when it is talked about uplisting on a different exchange because sometimes they require that a certain stock price be there uh, we have also gone to the shareholders with this idea a couple times um, one right when i took over and then they did it and it was done again over the last AGM, but we haven't done anything about it, even though there was times when we could. Um, as it's not something that, you know, generally always works. Uh, that being said, the board, it's another tool in the toolkit. And if the board thinks that this is going to be the right way to go, then we will communicate that with investors first. Um, it won't be through this form. It will be through, you know, either something like the AGM or through press releases, depending on what we're trying to communicate. Um, and it'll be there. So <clears throat> it has, it is a tool. It is, you know, been talked about, but again, I can't say, you know, on this forum, if or when these things will occur. Um, so just, you know, keep your, you know, keep your hat on that. Um, Okay, next questions. There's some questions that came in, and I wanted to get to these. I see that time's getting away from us, and we've got some procedural stuff to do. Uh, but I really want to get to this one. What and the people are talking about the status of the deal with uh, that we're in with MD8. I've mentioned this a couple times, and we've put a press release around it shortly afterwards. We're past. We're well into the the bidding on this one, or the selection. I guess is a more accurate term at this stage. Uh, so we have made it past significant hurdles on this front and are, um, you know, are continuing in the process, but we're very, very deep into it. Uh, so again, I hate, you know, I hate to keep saying this, but I can't say anything in this form as far as that's concerned, other than what's been said in the PR, but we are very deep. We've passed the flying colors through the first few challenges and, and, um, pieces we had to go through to get this deal done and you know it's continuing um going more slowly than we'd like but again we don't have control over that uh and but we will continue to keep you updated as that goes through um but it is it is going through as fast as i guess that they want it to go through <laughs> um or can muster now a follow-on question to this um was is it, you know, what are our capabilities around this type stuff? 
Uh, so I, I wanted to address this one up front. Number one, data metrics as a company, we're 100, we're a thousand percent sure that we can meet the criteria as far as technical merit and deliverability and quality is concerned um, for these contracts. So that that's not an issue. And I want to I want to remind everybody that's in here who has thought about or asked this question um, with these contracts that we wouldn't be allowed to bid on this type of stuff had we not previously proved our metal. Okay. So when it comes to these, the larger style bids, these were invitation only. So if you were not, you know, you hadn't done something really well previously, you're not getting invited back to, to play the game anymore. In this case, we're in there and we are well into the process and I can say that we've done extraordinarily well through that process. So as far as you know, being able to deliver technically, you don't, yeah, we're a thousand percent confidence, but that confidence doesn't just come from our internal abilities or, you know, what we've done internally. This is, there is an external vote of confidence available in this case. Um, in the form of just being in, invited to the bidding processes themselves. <clears throat> so not concerned um, about that in the least. Uh, okay, so questions from the, the overseas. Um, People want to know what the status of uh, the latte. Uh, I've got questions on status with latte and uh, Samsung, etc. So Andrew is heading to Korea later this week, first of next week, to meet with both of those groups. Um, Do this now, huh? And so there will be more to talk about when he returns. Um, so we we are still you know working in lockstep with both of those companies and their subsidiaries and we're looking forward to you know a long working relationship with those groups um which is why you know we occasionally have people that go over to korea to sit down with them just to make sure everything's going face to face properly make sure that you know look over our business units in seoul to make sure that you know they're on solid ground etc we just you know like to have a good eye on things and you know andrew speaks the language the so, bonus you know i unfortunately do not speak korean um so <clears throat> anyway, so they're going back over there to talk to the Latte and um, Samsung late this week, early next week. So we should have we should have some stuff regarding them. I would hope within the next month or so. Um, but the, again, those are still ongoing. There's nothing, uh, and those contracts, you know, are still being worked through. So can we clean up the website? That was another one. Yes, that can be done. I'm not not overly concerned um, with our ability to do that. So yeah, we'll go take a look. If the people have sent in some uh, pieces where the grammar and such, they don't, we're subpar. We'll make sure that that's fixed. Uh, and then last in Korea, uh, people are asking about how the robotic process automation things coming with 7-Eleven. Um, as far as the overall research is concerned, from what I understand, it's coming along uh, on the NLP front, which is what we're involved in. It's coming along very quickly and faster than they anticipated. That being said, I also understand on the process automation front, which is the flip side of this, which we are not involved in. This is, you know, not our area of expertise that it is coming along very poorly. Um, <laughs> I guess the easiest way, let me try to rephrase that in layman's terms. Um, the computer vision and computer talking is working well. What's not working well is the fetching of items and such like that from the store. Uh, so 
you know, the overall store automation needs a little bit of work. Um, the speech components appear to be fine. But that's about as much as I know of that project. It's not, they don't call us and keep us up to date. They just call us when they need help. Um, you know, with our, with our, uh, with the software we've licensed to them. As much we did. Okay. So we got one minute left, according to my thing. Got through about 95% of everything. So we put a poll up earlier that people wanted to know one week or two week. Uh, based on the results of that poll, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move to an every other week format. So we will not be back next week. We will be back the 27th. Uh, and we will increase the time, if necessary, to get through all the questions up to an hour. So we may go 30 minutes if there's not a lot of questions. We may go 45. Um, but we are going to go every other week because that is the prevailing um, sentiment here. Um, and people also asked if we could increase the time if we do that. So we're going to try that and see how that works out for everyone. So see you back in two weeks. Please keep the questions coming. We will be sure to uh, catalog them and then um, and then you know answer as many of them as we can here in this form. So thanks everybody, and we'll talk to you later.